We're not stronger than the Holy Ghost. We don't want to be wise in our own deceit. And that's for all of us. We don't want to rule by our own spirit and mistaken our emotions and our ways for God. When you say this is your life and you do what you want with it, you're not saved. You're not allowing the Holy Ghost to guide you. Because once you come to Christ, you realize you're bought with a price. And the Holy Ghost is upon me. And when you are an individual who says you're in Christ, but your frame of thinking is, nobody tells me what to do. This is my life. I will do. I feel the virtue. As a lot of folks would just say when we were younger, I'm grown. I can do what I want. You may have been born again at one time, but at this time, you're not walking in Christ. Because these are not the words of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was God Almighty manifested in the flesh and he submitted to his earthly parents. And he was the Almighty. I feel the virtue. When you take matters into your own, the Holy Ghost is upon me. You take matters into your own hands and you think you're justified. It's just a matter of time before God comes to your door. He'll give you signs and warnings to try to straighten you out. And if you don't take heed, then he comes down with the hammer. Because no flesh shall glory in his presence. No flesh shall be exalted. You cannot sin and do what you want and think God is still with you in that sin. There's a blasphemy to think so. It's blasphemy to think so. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That means the calling to God. God called you to be something, whether you do it or not, he still called you. But the Holy Ghost is not going to keep operating in you when you are constantly sinning. Why would he keep operating in you instead of trying to get you right? You, you Listen, make no mistake. He that practices sin is of the devil. Bottom line. You practice sin, you are the devil. He who says he is righteous is righteous only if they what? Live righteous. And if a righteous man dies in his sins, the scripture says his righteousness is remembered no more. Because you have to what? Endure until the end. If a sinner can serve the devil all the days of their life, and the devil keeps them in sin until they lift their eyes in hell, God is more powerful than the devil. That he can pray to God, save a man, the man can be saved all his life. And when it's all said and done, this man has overcome the enemy. Ah, somebody, somebody got it wrong. My dad used to say, son, you know the devil is strong, mighty. Yes, sir. He said, but God is almighty. The Holy Ghost is upon me. I'm just going to preach in the Holy Ghost. Read it quickly. In Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 1. Just bear with me as the Lord will speak to us. Uh, somebody say, why are you reading from the Bible? I'm, the Bible. I'm glad to ask because that's what we preach. That's, right. that's what we preach. Read it. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I behold and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north. Where was the seat of image of jealousy, which provoked him to jealousy? Ezekiel was sitting there with the elders. And while he was sitting there, he had a vision of the Lord. In the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, in the sixth year, six is the number of completion. It is also the number of man in the sixth month. 
in the sixth year. Six and six is twelve. Twelve is the number of foundation. Twelve is three. Three is the number of witness and deliverance. In the fifth month, five is the number of faith, five is the number of grace, five is the number of measure, balance. And he was taken up toward the north and he saw the images of jealousy. He saw idols that provoked him to jealousy that his people had. In other words, what's going on here? The children of Israel are about to get a complete prophecy. God is about to prophesy on the foundation. They have worn out their grace. They're no longer walking by faith. Now they've been weighed in the balance. And the Holy Ghost 3 is a witness against them. So I say, what you doing, Bishop? I'm ready to act. I'm teaching it according to the wisdom of the Read. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Anybody got an image of jealousy that will cause God to be jealous? Anybody put anything before God? Is there any idolatry in your heart or in your mind? That when God comes, he sees this image and it provokes him to jealousy. He's talking to his people. As I said earlier, the Lord showed me when I read Ezekiel, he also showed me that some of you feel the spirit of you think it's a spirit, almost like a humble spirit of a child. You think it's freedom that you're separating yourself from the body. God's not in that separation. You're drawing your spirit in. You're separating. God's not in that. The separation that you feel ain't a God. Because God will separate you from the body. He pushes you closer. He neither does he separate you from his authority, but he draws you closer. But Ezekiel, and the reason why I tell you these numbers, because numbers mean something to God. Not branded numbers for the lottery or not numerology, trying to uh, tell your fortune in your life, but numbers play a part in God's word. You understand what I'm saying? When you dream of certain numbers, if it's from God, there's a reason why you dream of those numbers. If you dream of a number four in a situation, four is a number of holding, but it's a number of conclusion. If you dream of the number four in a situation is from God, whatever that matter is, is about to come to an end. Nobody hear me? I feel a virtue. I feel a virtue. Somebody just had a dream with coming. I feel a virtue. I keep feeling the virtue. But that's power. That's power in it. You understand what I'm saying? Read. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? You see what they're doing? You see what my people are doing? They got ideas. They're provoking me to jealousy. They're doing things that I don't agree with. They're putting other things before me. Idols are just not static, but idols can be ideal. Idols can be a way of, of living. Idols can be your character. And stubbornness, which is a behavior, is idolatry. Huh? Rebellions of the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is idolatry. So your characteristics can be Idolatrous. And many of people of God are walking idols because the Holy Ghost, I feel the Holy Ghost, doesn't govern your heart or your life. Come on. Neither does He control your emotions. You've given them over to the flesh. I keep feeling the virtue. So when you feel this, I feel free. Free from what? What are you free from? If it's against the scriptures, you better check that freedom. I'm going to walk in liberty. I'm going to do what I want to do. What spirit is that? You can't do what you want to do and be saved. <clears throat> Somebody says, that's fair to say? 
I'm glad that. Is it fair to say you can't do what you want on the job and still have it? Yeah. Then I think it's fair to say. It. You can't do what you want in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And still say you serve God. Yeah, right. <laughs> and God is telling the man of God, you see what they're doing? So Bishop come to tell you, you see what you're doing? Do you see what you're doing? You see what you're doing? You see the idols in your heart? Idols in your home, idols in your lifestyle. Do you? And now you see that these things make God angry. And we just sing a song that God is God and God don't never change. He's still angry. In the book of Revelation, at the end of the world, it said they did not repent of their sorcery nor of their idolatry. We still got idols, modern day idols today. Look what they're doing. I need you to read it, preacher. Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again. He said, look at what they're doing. My people. So what God is saying, you think I would have to go far away from the sanctuary to see this stuff. But I'm right here. I'm seeing this stuff right here. I don't even have to go far. Man. I, I, I have a heavy present on me. Read. But turn thee yet again. Turn again. And thou shalt see greater abominations. You're going to see more sin than this. And he brought me to the door of the court. To the door of the court. And when I looked, Come on, behold, that was, a hole in the wall. There's a hole in the wall. Then said he to me, uh -huh. Son of man, Preacher. dig now in the wall. Dig in that wall. And when I had digged in the wall, I started digging. Behold the door. Now I wonder if I were to take a stab and start digging the hole in your heart. Is there a door there? You got a hidden door? Church, do you have a hidden door? Preachers, do you have a hidden door? Is there a hidden door? Remove the dirt and see if there's a hidden door in that. Because the Bible says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart. They can get through the hidden doors. If, 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 the, if the word's hidden in your heart, it'll find the doors and get rid of all the secret chambers. Deliver me from my hidden iniquities. But you gotta have that word hidden in there. So if a sin pops up and you don't know it, that word says, I got it. But how many saints of God got a hold in the spirit and there's a door behind it? Come on, son. And he said unto me, Look into that door. Come go on. in. Let's go in. And behold the wicked now, abomination. Now the Holy Ghost and Bishop will walk into the, to the hole in your door now. Go ahead. What's in that hole? Preacher? The wicked abominations oh, that they God. do here. God, what's behind that door? All your sin that you're doing when you ain't around the church. I ain't around the church. I ain't around the saints. <coughs> when all oh, my God. Lord, look at that. Mm -hmm. What's behind that door? All the stuff you have that you know ain't right. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it anyway. Come on. What you see? So I went in. Oh, I went in. And I saw. Come on, preacher. And behold. My goodness. Every four. Come on. Of creepy Come things. And abominable beasts. Come on. And all the idols of the house of Israel. Uh -huh. Portrayed upon the wall round about. I went in to them chambers. And man, what did I see? Everything that I told them don't eat, don't touch, don't do. They had it there. Every idol. Every abomination. Everything the church taught against was behind that door. They were still going against God's word. Painted and portrayed upon the walls. What well, God said, I came into their house and they had all kind of ungodly stuff in their home. Even some of their pictures weren't right. Read. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients. 70, of the house of 70 is a number of strength and encouragement and wisdom. And God chose 70 men to strengthen and stand with Moses and to give witness. The Sahedrin court, the, the law court of the Hebrews were with 70 men. 
But we see here, the devil wants to attack your source of wisdom. He wants to contaminate your wisdom and weaken your strength. So now the 70 elders, which will represent the strength and wisdom of Israel, is being contaminated. Read it. And in the midst of them uh -huh. stood Jehazaniah, My goodness. the son of Shephan, mm -hmm. with every man his censer in his hand, uh -huh. and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also to me, turn thee yet again. Do you see what the elders, not just the kids, but do you see what the grown folk are doing? Did you see what the ministry is doing? Those who say they have a rule of us? Do you see what the church is doing? In the what? In the what? In the what? Oh, y'all, okay. Y'all must be in the dark. You don't want to say it. In the dark? Back in the day, we used to play slip in the darkness. How many church folks are in the dark? Because you say God doesn't see you. God doesn't care. Now the word then you know he's very angry. Because he's a God of the light. And light is shining in dark places. You got a dark secret. You got a dark life. Get rid of it. Men love darkness better than they do light. Why is that? Because the things they do are evil. Don't love yourself to your death. If it ain't right, get rid of it. Change it. Put it down. Because the God of light can see in the dark. You see what they are doing every man. Going by their own images. By their own imagination. In the dark. So you leave the presence of God and you walk in the dark. You open that door that you've got in your heart. And behind that door is every sin you don't want to let go of. Because you say it. God can't see it. What is that saying? Somebody says, I don't say that, but what you are saying is you have no reverence for God. Jesus. Your respect for God is not strong enough to at least help you to fight a good fight. <coughs> Read. And he said also to me, turn thee yet again. Man, keep looking. And thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. My goodness. Read. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house. <laughs> which was toward the north. And behold, there sat woman weeping for ten months. Then said unto, him, unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see... Tamar was a god that sprung forth from the days of the towers of Babylon and Babylon. A god that was supposed to have died, was locked into the underground, couldn't get out. Amen. So the women would cry and pray for his release. What he was trying to say is, you see the tears? I've been praying. Amen. And worshiping this God, praying, amen, for the God Tamar, that he would have mercy, that he would be set free from the gates of hell. What God is trying to say is that your tears don't move God. Amen. It's the reason why you shed your tears. Amen. Sometimes we cry and we scream out loud, but we ain't praying to God because we're not getting delivered in our hearts. We're praying and being emotionally upset over other things. 